Okay, dear friends, hello. Uh, today I'd like to talk about Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, uh, which is approaching, uh, we're just two days away. And about the ninth of Av, the Mishnah and Ta'anit, uh, chapter four, Mishnah six says, five things happened to our ancestors on the 17th day of the month of Tammuz, and five things happened to our ancestors on the day of Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of Av. So I'll talk about the ninth of Av. It was decreed on the ninth of Av that our ancestors not enter the land of Israel, but that generation die in the desert. What was that? According to our tradition, the spies who Moses sent out the 12 spies to see the land and to testify, the idea was to show that the land was good and also how to capture it. And if you remember 10 out of 12 said, the land is good, but we cannot capture them. The people are too strong and they live in fortresses and there's no way. And only Joshua and Kalev said, Tovah if the land is good and we can do it and don't worry. And they left on the first day of Tammuz and they returned on the 10th day of Av after 40 days. And uh, that's when the people cried. Of course, there's a, they say that the people cried on the ninth of Av. Rashi brings the ninth of Av. So how was that the 40 days? Depending, of course, how many days. Um, if they left on the Rosh Chodesh Tammuz, and if Rosh Chodesh Tammuz was, let's say, 30 days uh, that year, so then the ninth of Av, of course, the night of the ninth of Av would be 39, 40, depending on how uh, you look at it. So... Um, Rashi says it was actually on the 9th of Av. That would mean they left the day before uh, Rosh Chodesh Tammuz. But the point is that from Rosh Chodesh Tammuz till the 10th of Av, actually, you have also 40 days. Why do I say, by the way, the 10th of Av? You know, according to our tradition, the, the temple burned from the 9th of Av to the 10th of Av. In the book of um, Jeremiah, for instance, when it talks about the destruction of the temple, so it says on... In, on chapter 52, 12, in the fifth month, the fifth month is a month of Av, on the 10th day of the month, in the 19th year of Nebuzar, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylonia, and Nebuzar Adan, the cap, captain of the guard of the army, they came to Jerusalem and, built, and burned the house of God and the house of the king. So why does it say the 10th? Because according to our tradition, it happened on the 9th and the 10th, but of course, we only fast on the 9th. And there's actually a tradition that even on the 10th until the middle of the day, there are certain restrictions that we keep in honoring the 10th the de the day uh, too. The interesting thing though, about, so what are the five things? The first one is the fact that the Miraglim, the spies, came back and the people cried. Rashi brings the Midrash that says, you cried for nothing on that night because God would easily take you into the land. I'll give you what to cry about when the temple will be destroyed years later. What were the other things? The temple was destroyed according to the Mishnah twice on the ninth of Av. The first one is actually mentioned in the Torah by the Babylonians, but even the Romans supposedly, it happened on the ninth of Av according to our tradition. And Betar, what was Betar? Betar was the city, the fortress city, which was the fallback plan, plan B, for the Bar Kokhva revolt from 132 to 135, meaning that even if the Romans were to recapture Jerusalem, Betar, just south of Jerusalem, would be a fortress where they would uh, recoup. Uh, but the in the end, Betar was also taken and destroyed, and that was on the 9th of Av, according to our tradition, and that was the end of the Bar Kokhva revolt. And also Nechrasha Ha'ir, which was when the Romans made Jerusalem into a pagan city, that was also on the ninth of Av, according to our tradition. And therefore, the Mishnah finishes off by saying, when Av enters, mematim besimcha, we are not very happy. And we also do things to show that we're not happy at this time. So we have four fast days, you might actually, that have to do with the destruction of the temple. Um, three of them are mentioned in the text. Um, actually, out four in a sense, but you have Asara Betevit, the tenth of the tenth month. Asara Betevit is mentioned um, as being the time when the siege of the city begins. 
the 17th of Tammuz is when Hovka'a year, when um, the walls were destroyed. In some places it says the 9th of, of, of Tammuz, but our tradition is the 17th. Again, they're different. Obviously, these things don't happen in one day. And then, of course, the 9th and 10th of the destruction of the temple. And then some Gedalia, Gedalia, who was in charge of the Jews left over in Israel after the destruction of the temple by, by the Babylonians, when he was assassinated, which actually took place in Rosh Hashanah, but we commemorated on the third day of Tishrei, that is the fourth day. So these are sad days. Does that mean that Jews are um, into astrology? Meaning they're sad days and they're bad days and they're good days? It might appear that way, but if you look in the prophet, you see that these sad days are contingent on something. And I'll read you from the book of Zechariah, Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 8, verse um, 19, 18, 19. And the word of God of hosts came to me, saying, This is what God says. The fast of the fourth month, which is Tammuz, and the fast of the fifth month, which is the ninth of Av, and the fast of the seventh month, which is Tzom Gedalia, and the fast of the tenth month, which is the tenth of Tevet. These four fast days, which in brackets I'm saying have to do with Jerusalem, shall become times of joy and gladness and cheerful feast to the house of Judah. Therefore, love, truth, and peace. So the prophet is saying these fast days will be abolished. They are not necessarily bad times for the Jewish people. In the meantime, they are. In the meantime, when Av enters, it's not a great time for us. In the meantime, those 40 days from Tammuz all the way to Sarbatevet are not great times for us. But they will be changed. It's going to be different. How will they be changed? Because if according to the tradition we brought it on by not believing in going to the land of Israel. And last week we read in the Parsha where Moses is talk, re, talking about in Devarim about the spies who were sent to the land. And he says to the people, In this issue, you do not have faith in God when it comes to going to the land. You believe in God, you want to keep his Torah, but it comes to the land of Israel. That's your Achilles heel. There your faith is not strong. Remember the story of, the Midrash tells the story of Nachshon ben Aminadav. Nachshon, who married Aaron's sister. And um, the Jews came to the Red Sea. Yamsuf. And uh, God said to Moses, the seas split the sea. So and God, and Moses cries out to God and says, what are we supposed to do? And God says, just tell the people go. <laughs> and the people go and they come to the sea. And they're not sure what to do. Nachshon, a man of great faith, he says, but God says, go forth, let's go. People look, Nachshon, there's water. He says, God said, you go forth. Nachshon walks into the water up to his ankle. Sea doesn't split. He goes in further, the water is up to his waist, sea doesn't split. The water is now up to his chest, and the sea doesn't split. The water goes up to his mouth, and is about to reach his nose, and he looks up at the heavens, and the water splits. Sometimes you need that leap of faith. And without it, we don't have the power to do things. The land of Israel is about faith. The Talmud says that the land of Israel is acquired through suffering. But after it's acquired through suffering, it's yours. It's not easy sometimes entering in these arenas. It's so much easier sometimes being a religious person in a synagogue, in a yeshiva, and not having to go out to the real world. But God wants his message, which is a message of mankind, to be out in the real world, not to be stuck in the hallways of marble somewhere where nobody can hear the word. So, interestingly enough, if we look at, um, by the way, our calendar, 
we have these three weeks. These three weeks are called the um, Bena Mitzharim, between the borders. It's actually a quote from the Book of Lamentations. Eh? And the day is actually, we have 22 days from the 17th of Tammuz until the 10th of Av are 22 days. If it reminds you of anything, the 22 letters of the alphabet. There's another 22 also in our tradition, our calendar. It's from the first day of Tishrei, the beginning of the year, until the 21st or 22nd day of Tishrei, um, which is the end of Shemini Atzeret. These are days of festivity, days of building. First, we have Rosh Hashanah, where we take stock and think about the world and describe the rebirth of the world in God's act of creation, whether it happened on this day or the creation of man is another discussion. On the 10th, we have Yom Kippur, where we have to think about our ways. And then we have Zman Simchatenu, the holiday, the festival of our happiness, which is Sukkot. And then an extra day of Shemini Atzeret. And in Sukkot, we're building a house, both for ourselves, we're building ourselves up in, as individuals. And this house is also called by Amos Amos Sukkot Darvina Nofela, the Sukkah of David, which is following, which means the temple. So we're also rebuilding the Jewish people. In Kabbalistic literature, when the letters go from Aleph to Taf in their correct order, that's called building. And according to our tradition, God built the universe through the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. It says he looked in the Torah and created the universe. The Torah is the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. This is also brought in the Midrash of Rabbi Akiva, Otiot Rabbi Akiva, the letters of Rabbi Akiva, Midrash from the Middle Ages, a little earlier, probably from the Gionim. And, um, but when the letters go backwards, that means dissembling, it means destruction. These three weeks are the letters going backwards. They go from the tuft to the olive. And by the time they hit the olive, the temple is destroyed. And that's why the exact opposite, the 22 days at the beginning of the year start with 10 days, the 10 days of penitence, and then another 12 which are happy days. In the three weeks, it goes the opposite. First, there are 12 days, which are relatively happy. Then we enter the 10 days of Av, which are sad. The exact opposite is the letters going backwards. But Zechariah tells us a secret. It does not have to continue this way. The spell can be broken. These can be joyous days again. These can be days of festivity. It's not for nothing that the Midrash that says that the Messiah can come on the ninth of Av. And in fact, we actually dress in the ninth of Av in the afternoon. We stop some of our mourning. We wear festive clothes again because it's called a moid, it's a holiday, in anticipation of what it can be and how it can be changed. So when we think of this, we have to realize that these this time can be changed, but it depends on us, both as individuals and as a community, as a nation here in the land of Israel. But in order for it to happen, we have to have faith in ourselves as a people, as a nation. Sometimes we even have to get a little bit of credit to our leadership. I know it's hard for Israelis to do that, but a little bit <laughs> uh, sometimes. They're just people but some of them are actually trying to do a good job and some of them not, like in every place. But you know what? We elected them, we're to blame. And um, <clears throat> if that's the thing. But you have to have a certain belief in society and you have to spread this belief. And I wanna end by a story. The story is told of Shlomo Kalbach. And um, two couples approached him, um, people who he had influenced and taught and both of them were barren, didn't have children. And they asked Shlomo and said, Shlomo, you know, we really think you're a special person. Can you daven for us? Can you pray for us that maybe we can have a child? Shlomo says, look, God in the end is the only one who give, can give the fruit of the womb, but I'll try. Yeah, of course I'll daven for you. A year later, one of the couples has a child and they call Kalbach and they tell him the good news and they invite him to the Simcha. 
than the event. And the second couple does not. And they go to Kalbach and they're to complain. <laughs> says, I remember what they said when the other couple came at the same time. And both of us asked you to pray. And they got a child and we didn't. What's going on? You didn't take us seriously. Kalbach looks at me and says, I prayed for both of you exactly the same. But let me tell you why they got a child and you didn't. Because the day after I prayed for that couple, I noticed they went to buy a baby carriage. You did. Sometimes the power of faith is also how much we believe in ourselves and how much we believe in the possibility of creating change and a new life. The more that we as individuals and the more that the nation of Israel believe that we can bring peace and joy in this country, the closer we will be towards Tisha B'Av and all the four fasts turning into days of joy and jubilation for the Jewish people, according to the prophecy of Zechariah, Shalom, Shalom.